Thank you, Paul Hawkins, for that uh, noisy report. And a reminder, the National Emergency Test is scheduled for 3 o'clock this afternoon. For 40 years, the Greek and British governments have been negotiating, or some would say arguing, over the collection of stone sculptures and inscriptions known as the Elgin Marbles or the Parthenon Sculptures. The British ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, Lord Elgin, took them from the Parthenon in Athens between 1801 and 1805 and sold them to the British Museum, where they have resided ever since. Under a new plan by former Chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne, who now chairs the trustees at the British Museum, these sculptures are on the brink of being returned to Greece to be displayed in the new Acropolis Museum. But the sticking point is one of ownership. Under British law, they would legally still be owned by the United Kingdom. This, says the Greek government, is unacceptable since the marbles were, for some Greeks at least, stolen by Lord Elgin in the first place. Yanis Varoufakis is an economist and former Greek Minister of Finance, and earlier today he spoke to me from his home in Athens and I asked him whether he believes that the sculptures should be returned to Athens and displayed in the Acropolis Museum. Yes, I do think that that should take, happen uh, in the interests of both the Acropolis Museum and the British Museum. Uh, I am not um, a cultural nationalist. Uh, I care about the B British Museum and its capacity to project uh, global culture to uh, the four corners of the earth, just as much as, as I care about the Acropolis Museum. But the Acropolis Museum is the place where to display the Parthenon marbles and statues, which have been so violently removed by Elgin, while at the same time, we Greeks must make sure that the particular room in the British Museum um, exhibits a permanently rotating collection of antiquities that allow the British Museum to be a world leader in uh, projecting and uh, communicating the concepts, notions and ideas that came out of ancient Greece. Is the question of ownership important to you, Yanis. Does it matter whether they belong to Britain or to Greece? Is this not a subject that we could skate over, that, on which we could compromise? Absolutely. I don't care about ownership. But I do care about the integrity. You see, uh, Michael, if this was just you know, a statue that was pulled out of some shipwreck or dug out by an archaeologist or a vase, they could have stayed in the British Museum. The problem with the Parthenon marbles, yeah. was that Elgin actually removed them, defaced them. Remember Lord, Lord Byron's uh, poem in 1812, where he said, dull is uh, the eye that will not weep to see, addressing the Parthenon. Thy walls defaced, thy mouldering shrines removed. We need to reintegrate the Parthenon marbles with the Parthenon. It doesn't matter who they belong to. They belong to humanity. They don't belong to the Greeks, to the Brits, to the Europeans, to the Asians. And they belong to world culture. And at the same time, make sure that the British Museum remains a center of attention of anybody who wants an idea of the classics. Uh, describe to us, Yanis, the Acropolis Museum, because a new museum has been built in Athens. I must say I'm deeply impressed by it. It's almost a shadow of the Parthenon itself. So you can move up inside the building. It's largely glass. You can get up to the altitude of the pediment and of the frieze where the sculptures are meant to be and look across to the Parthenon and relate where they should be on the Parthenon to where they could be in the Acropolis Museum. Quite an interesting concept. It is an architectural marvel. On top of the museum, which is sitting just below the uh, the hill of the Acropolis, they've built effectively a glass uh, rectangle, which is of exactly the same proportions and the same size of the Parthenon, and it is in parallel to the Parthenon. And the uh, space in which the Parthenon marbles, the ones we still have here in Greece, are displayed, and the space that has been reserved for the marbles that are in the British Museum, would, if, if placed in that spot, would be a fantastic parallelism with the Parthenon. And I think that British visitors would feel very proud if uh, an agreement can be struck between the Greek and the British authorities that will allow the reunification of the Parthenon marbles with the Parthenon, while at the same time, I insist on this, the British Museum, museum should be a privileged space for displaying 
a rotating beautiful array of uh, Greek classical antiquities. Now that is a very interesting point. One argument that is made is that the British Museum has about six million visitors a year, the Acropolis Museum about one and a half million. Um, London is a city that is much more visited internationally than Athens. So it seems the exposure of the sculptures at least is greater in London than it would be in Athens. What's the retort to that? Well, the retort to that, Michael, is that this is the reason why I think that the British Museum should remain uh, a center of excellent uh, displays from the ancient Greek classical era. But the way that, you know, most visitors that go into that particular room in the British Museum today live with a hinge of sadness, including my British friends, because they can see that those marbles don't belong there. They should be reunified with the Parthenon. But imagine if they knew that this deal was struck between our two countries and what they actually see is a rotating display of splendid ancient Greek antiquities that are voluntarily and happily and gladly sent by the Greek people, by the Greek state, to the British Museum, then I think we would have the best of all possible worlds. And I think then George Osborne uh, would be able to get a lot more funding in the process of crowdfunding for the and sponsorship for rebuilding and refurbishing the British Museum. It will be you know, mutually advantageous both for the British Museum and the Acropolis Museum. Uh, personally, I find the present display of the sculptures in the British Museum underwhelming. They're in a long, thin corridor uh, by comparison with the stunning location where they would be located if they went back to Greece. But putting on your old political hat, Yanis, what do you think is actually going to happen? Well, I have no idea what's going to happen. What I can tell you is what is happening. There is a very shady ghastly discussion taking place between George Osborne and the Greek Prime Minister, or the Deputy Prime Minister, um, a, a deal that is really worse than what we already have. Um, the deal is to send a quarter or half of the marbles to Greece on condition that the Greeks will send uh, some antiquities to the British Museum as collateral. I mean, this is simply adding insult to injury. I don't think it should be going down that road. It, would, it should be um, a completely different kind of approach. We should look at the British Museum and the Acropolis Museum as one unit okay. that needs to be enhanced. That should mean all of the Parthenon novels being reunited with the Acropolis Museum, the Acropolis, the Parthenon. And we Greeks should take a very keen interest in ensuring that the British Museum has a magnificent rotating display in that particular hall that you mentioned, which at the moment is sad, I agree with you, but it can be made magnificent. Uh, Yanis, I think they uh, ought to appoint you as a negotiator. You could perhaps smooth the course of these negotiations. Thank you so much for coming on uh, GB News this morning. Yanis Varoufakis. Uh, we contacted the British Museum to participate in this programme, but it declined to take part. However, the museum has said that the marbles were not stolen. It says that Lord Elgin uh, acted with the full knowledge and permission of the legal authorities of the day in both Athens and London. Lord Elgin's activities were thoroughly investigated by a parliamentary select committee in 1816 and found to be entirely legal. Uh, I spoke to GB News political editor Tom Harwood earlier about Diane Abbott withdrawing her remarks about racism. It's now been reported that she has had the Labour whip withdrawn. We'll be talking to Tom again shortly to find out more. That's uh, after the break. <laughs>